How's it going everyone? Mitch here with another Logic Pro 10 tutorial. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Logic Remote. Kind of doing a show and tell, uh, kind of show you what things we can do with it and give you an overview of what it exactly is. So let's jump right into the Logic Remote. So this is the interface. Uh, let's start at the top. Top right, we can select some global functions. There's some edits, re undo, redo. We can select new tracks. We can, if we have multiple logics on multiple computers, we can uh, select and connect to two different logic projects, select our velocity range, and get some help with the just the Logic Remote app. Uh, there's some help in another position, which I was showing a little bit later. And then we have some global functions. What you see is what you get. This is non-configurable. But, as I will show you later, we can access different global functions besides these through a different interface. Then we can have the library. This is, you know, all of the different things that you have inside of uh, inside the library you can view inside of Logic. That's just over here on the left, and you can open that and select whatever you want. Um, it looks like, oh, it'll actually uh, do that for you. And then, so this is a good this is a good show and tell here. If we go and we do undo, we can see that it'll change back here inside of Logic to the piano that we had. So there's just kind of a uh, you know, undo situation that we would want to do. Kind of cool. All right, so the next, on the top left, there are some different view options. There's smart controls, which we'll be getting into. Um, then there's another view. Uh, it's is completely dependent on whatever track that we have, and we'll be getting into that in a second. We have the mixer view, which I was kind of showing you at the very beginning. Uh, we have key commands, which is kind of cool. You can go through and select. This is where you can go into and manipulate more global functions than just what is here at the top. And you can... We can play, we can stop, we can rewind, fast forward, and you can even select and create your own here in this in this view, which is kind of, which is kind of nice. So, if you're into that, there's that functionality. Also, there's some smart help. This is the help on all of Logic Pro, not just this particular application. So this is where you can go in, search, um, maybe learn a couple things about logic that you didn't know before. All right, so next thing, I'm gonna be talking about the mixer here just a little bit. The mixer is a little bit finicky. What I've found is that if you play the song without the mixer open inside of logic, it doesn't give you an accurate representation of the tracks that are uh, live at a particular time. So let me just show you. First of all, I should note that up here at the top are all of the particular tracks that you have in your project. Um, so if I open up the mixer inside of Logic here, um, all the tracks in the mixer will be viewed up here at the top. Now if I play the track, you can see that you get a basically an overview of all the things going on in your project and then you can swipe through and view particular tracks in your mixer, which is kinda cool. You can control automation mode, you can control mute, send, record on a particular track, pan, send, and you can even view the particular buses that you have set up here um, in the sense section, uh, which is very nice. So that's all things you can do. Um, all the numbers are obviously just normal tracks. Uh, when you start getting into auxiliary tracks, they are starting to be numbered by the A1, um, through whatever, and then at the end there's the output and the master, which are up here at the top. Um, and you can see that. Um, so, I mean, it's a very intuitive interface. Uh, one thing to note here, just be very careful. Touching anything on the screen has disastrous effects. Make sure if you are going to touch this section that you know what you're going to be doing, and uh, uh, it's very easy to just accidentally touch something and ruin what you have mixed at the current period of time. So uh, just be careful with that. All right, so like I showed you, we can go through and uh, play the track. And I'm going to manipulate it, particular parameters here, and show you that it actually changes settings here inside of Logic. So I'm, I'm playing right now with just the auxiliary tracks, 
And uh, so, because that gives kind of the biggest effect, I have must, multiple tracks bust through into a single track which I can manipulate. Uh, so it actually does change settings here inside of Logic, uh, which is pretty nice and uh, whatever. So let's talk about some smart controls. I am currently, currently I have a, it looks like a piano selected. So that's why this view is like it is. Uh, so if I select something else, these are two piano tracks. We get into some atmosphere pads still in this piano view. If I select an ultra beat track, the view changes based on whatever instrument you have on the track. If you select an audio track, it just shows the particular uh, smart controls for that track. Now, I've talked in an earlier tutorial about how to configure smart controls inside of Logic to map to different parameters than just the given default parameters. Now, the bad thing about this iPad remote is that we cannot open particular plugins on a particular track and manipulate the settings on them. The only way we can do that is to actually go in here inside of Logic and map different parameters to the smart controls menu, which we can access from our remote. Uh, so for what it's worth, just make sure that uh, if you want to access particular parameters, you have to go through and create particular mappings inside of the smart controls. All right. And uh, so if I open up maybe a piano track, it will actually play the volume from that track. There's some different options. I'm not going to really get into that. And then smart controls. You should know what smart controls are. Basically changing a particular parameter of a particular plugin on the track. All right, and then the next view is dependent also on whatever track you have selected. Right here, this is for a piano or an atmosphere pad or you know whatever you have selected at the particular point in time. If you go to an ultra beat, it changes to kind of a uh, like a sample pad which you can uh, select different samples and play them through Logic, which is kind of cool. So let's go back um, to this view. This is actually my fav most favorite view here inside of this remote. It's because we can play different chords. We can play the chords by selecting the sections in white at the top. The sections in black at the bottom are just particular notes. Uh, so how does Logic configure and find these particular chords? Well, it is mapped directly to the key that we have specified inside of Logic. So if I double click this, we can change the key to, I don't know, uh, D. I'll select OK. And you can see that the chords here have changed uh, based on what we have selected inside of Logic. Another cool feature is if we select stay, sustain to be on, we can, it'll sustain the note until we press something else, which is, which is kind of a nice feature. And uh, it, it's kind of a nice way to just make a progression, uh, very simply. And uh, so this is one of my favorite views. If you don't want it to automatically map to whatever track you have selected, you can change between whatever. Another thing that I haven't gone over is some of the guitar. It's kind of cool. Um, it's basically, you can, in this, in this view, strum. Which is kind of cool. I mean, it's up to you how you want to view this and, and use it. Uh, but let's get into how I particularly use this application. Well, first off, I'm going to say I don't use it very often because it is kind of nonsensical for me to use this when I can just sit in front of Logic here. So the reasons I do use this is Logic and Apple have this nice thing called AirPlay. I can AirPlay the volume, what's coming out here, inside of Logic to an Apple TV that is connected to another set of speakers in my house. That is kind of nice so that I can change, put the volume to another set of speakers, get a new mix, get a new feel for the song. I can take my Logic remote out in front of those speakers and manipulate particular um, things in the mixer, do whatever I want, right? Um, and, and configure the mix to those speakers. This is really nice if you want to do something like mastering and you want to make sure that it sounds good on a wide variety of speakers. That's where I use the Logic Remote. Uh, it's also kind of nice, if you want to, to just play with the mix with a Logic Remote. It is kind of a refresh. It's a simplified view. There's not so much stuff thrown at you. It's very cluttered inside of Logic. So you can go through and use this Logic Remote to uh, do some mixing if you'd like as well. So 
those are the reasons why I use it or why I would use it. Um, but anyway, for what it's worth. Hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Uh, please let me know in the comments below uh, what you would like to choose for your next for my next tutorial. Or you could go into the description below and I have a survey there which I usually pull things from uh, if, if you want to take that as well. So everyone, thanks for watching. I'll be seeing you all very soon. Have a great day.